Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. Now in this video, we'll talk about inheritance. Now we talk about a concept of OOPS, you know, which is object oriented programming. We have so many concepts to talk about and one of them is inheritance. Now in real life, what we have is we have this parent and child relationship, right? So whatever belongs to your parents belongs to you. Example, if my father or mother has a phone, it's my phone, right? By default, my phone would be my phone, but my father's phone would be my phone, right? That's how it works. So if your parents house, it's your house. That's what we say inheritance. Tense, right? The same concept you can implement in programming as well. In fact, all the languages which follows OOPS concept, they do implement inheritance, right? And the way you do that is with the help of classes. Class inherit a class. Let's try that. What I'm talking about is Let's say if you have a class and class is A, okay? Again, it should be a logical name. So you can go with employee class, you can go with student class, you can go with laptop class, whatever class you love. But time being, just for the example, we are going for class A and class B or class C. In future, we'll try to implement some other examples using uh, different names and with proper example. But at this point, just to keep it simple, let's go for class A. Now, if we talk about this class A, this class A will have multiple features, right? Maybe we can define two methods here. So we'll set definition that the first method which I want to go for is let's say feature one okay so let's say we got this function which is feature one and this function does provide you something okay so time when we are printing feature one working that's it nothing much of course it can be a complex code but make it simple let's keep it that and then we can have another feature here let me just copy paste this code so I will say copy and paste and this would be my feature two so we got feature one and feature two and this will print feature two is working so this class a has two features we got feature one feature too right and the way you can access them is with the help of object right and the way you create an object is very simple you simply say a1 is equal to a that's how you create the object right where a is your constructor again you can find that init method here but not needed at this point so this will work and using this a1 you can call feature 1 you can call feature 2 right so you can say a1 dot feature 1 and a1 dot feature 2 and this will work let me just run this code and you can see we got feature 1 working feature 2 working so this code is working now what I'm excited about is, let's say we have one more class. Let's talk about class B. So let me just create a class B here itself. So here I will say class B and class B will also have two features. I will name this as feature three and feature four. Instead of typing them, let me just copy paste the code here and we'll name this as feature three and feature four, right? See, normally what happens, you know, when you work on a project, of course, we have a very big team, right? So example, if one person is defining a class, okay? In that class, we provide you four features or four methods. Maybe you want to define some other class in which you need some extra features and you also want the existing features. You don't have to redefine it, right? You can use it. And the way you do that is simply saying, example, in this class B, we got two features, right? We got feature three, we got feature four. And of course, if I create the object of B1, so it's a B1 is equal to B, and the functions which you can call using B1. So if I say B1 dot, you can see we got only two options. We got feature three and feature four. Of course, right? Because in B class, we have only two features. What if you want to get the features of A as well? And that's where inheritance comes into picture so we can say hey this b is a child class of a right and the moment you say child class it will import all the features so what i will say is this b is a child class or you can say subclass we have different terminology we can use here and we can simply say in the bracket you can say a so this class b is inheriting all the features from a and we got it right just by writing that one thing you know just bracket a we are saying b is inheriting the features from a which means with the object of b which is b1 in this case the moment i say b1 dot see the options you can access feature one feature two feature three and feature four and that's the importance of inheritance which simply means if you already have a class which provides you some feature and in future if you want to create your own classes in which you want to use those features you just need to inherit them right so we can use some terminologies here we can say super class subclass or we can say parent class or a child class so time in will refer them as super class and subclass so super is a class which is a and a class which inherits the class we will call them as subclass so b is subclass and a is super class so that's the concept about inheritance now this is also called as a single level inheritance we have some other types as well we also have a multi-level inheritance now what it means example let's say if i have another class here let me create one more class here and this class is let's say c so we'll call this class c or this class c in 
inherits B. Now what will happen is whatever you do in this class, let's say time bin, I will define only one feature here, which is a feature five. You can see how lazy I am. So I'll say this is feature five working, right? So we got C class, which has only one feature. But the moment you create an object for C1, so I will say C1 is equal to C. The moment I say C1 dot, see the methods you can use. So we can use feature one. Now feature one, feature two are coming from A, right? But C is only extending B. So that's the relationship. We have grandparent, we have parent, and then we have child, right? So a child can access all the features from parent, grandparent, great grandparent, right? So that's how it works. Okay, this is working, right? So we got single where you have one superclass, one subclass, then we have multi-level where you have superclass, subclass, and then I guess a plus of that superclass. Okay, this is working. What if you go for multiple? What is multiple here? Let's say the C is not only taking from A and B. We got some other class as well. Just for time being, what I will do is I will say B is not inheriting A, okay? So A and B, they are two different classes. Nothing, they are not related to each other. A provides two features, B provides two features, okay? So there's no relationship between A and B. There are two, dif two different classes. C says, I want to access features from both, from A and B. So in this case, so C will inherit from A and B both. So you will say A comma B. So C will uh, copy from both or C will inherit from both. So you will say C1. The moment you say C1, you can see you can access all the features. That's not the case with B1 now. B1 can only access two features, feature three and feature four, because B is not inheriting A. Okay, point to remember. So we got A, we got B, and then we got C. C is inheriting both the classes, A and B. So this is called as multiple. So this is your multiple, right? So we have done with single, we have done with multi-level, and then we have multiple. So this is how we can work with inheritance. In the next video, we'll try to focus more on inheritance and let's see what else we can do with it. So I hope you are enjoying this session. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos.